I'm Kelly Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 608. Imagine if you could use a Wiimote to interact with an iPhone or iPod Touch. Would it improve the fun of some iPhone games? I'm not sure, but someone is working on it. M Ringwall, no relation to Molly, I presume, posted this video on YouTube. The iPhone is in airplane mode when the guy starts an OpenGL ES demo where we see a virtual Wiimote. The application on the phone connects to the Wiimote through Bluetooth and every move of the Wiimote in any direction is matched on the screen by the virtual Wiimote. This proof of possibility means in a few days, weeks, or months, we'll be seeing Wiimote controlling games on jail broken iPhones or iPod Touches. The question is, is it just kind of cool or is it something really cool? Since the screen is so small, I'm on the fence. Ustream improved its iPhone app for the 3GS, so you can now record video and upload it to Ustream Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube with an iPhone 3GS. If you have a Nokia phone, it's even better because you can stream live to Ustream. Until my iPhone got smashed, I was looking ever so forward to getting the TomTom Tom car kit. Handtech.co.uk has added it to their online store, priced at £113.85. Is that how you guys say it? It isn't in stock, but it gives us a better idea of what the car kit might cost. In the US, at the current exchange rate, that would be around $192. My bet is that we'll see it priced here in the States for $199. Sony has two new Cybershot cameras that we'll get to in a second, but first let's talk about their new party shot dock. Lori Grunin over at CNET thinks it's kind of wacky. I think it has a degree or two of awesome. It's a flying saucer shaped thing that mounts to a tripod. You dock either of the two new Cybershots on it, and then it goes to work for 11 hours on a couple of AA batteries taking photos so you don't have to. It'll pan the camera 360 degrees and tilt at 24 degrees. It's smart enough to detect faces and compose the image before it snaps the photo when a person smiles. You can set various rules about rotation, frequency, and flash, of course. To me, candid photos are the best photos, and I like the element of surprise this brings when it comes time to look at photos from something like Christmas morning when all the family is over opening presents. Now about those two new cyber shots. One is the TX1, the other is the WX1. Most of what they offer is the same, so let's deal with what's different first. The TX1 is designed for fashion-oriented folks. You can flick through images on the LCD like on an iPhone. You can be as close as half an inch from your subject or use the four times telescopic zoom for subjects far away. The WX1 is the more serious camera. It has a wide angle, 24 to 120 millimeter five times optical zoom lens with a 2.4 maximum aperture. Now about what's the same because that's the exciting part. The TX1 and the WX1 both use what Sony calls an Exmor R back illuminated CMOS sensor to enhance image clarity and drastically reduce grain when shooting in low light. Technically, what's happening is that electronics that traditionally have blocked light gathering capability have been moved out of the way so the sensor can gather more light. Both cameras also include twilight and anti-motion blur modes that rapidly capture six images and combine them into one image that has greater detail and lower noise. Sweet panorama and 10 frames per second burst shooting makes it possible to shoot panoramic images with a press of a button and a sweep of the camera across the scene you're capturing. The TX1 will capture a 185 degree panorama and the WX1 will take a 256 degree panorama with an image size of 7152 by 1080. That's it for today. This brief was brought to you by Squarespace.com. Check them out if you want to inexpensively build a pretty website without dealing with code. Use promo code GEEK to save 12%. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Callie Lewis.